welcome back to my channel this is sash so today i'm gonna do a silk press on my hair but before i do the silk press i always do a moisturizing deep conditioning process and that kind of helps to eliminate frizz and it helps to get my hair more silky and bouncy so i would recommend instill the moisture before the press during the washing process rather than trying to um, put like a ton of oils onto the hair afterwards because that's going to make the hair flat and lifeless. So um, I just shampooed my hair. So now I'm going to make my moisturizing deep conditioner. So I'm going to show you how I make that deep conditioner. So you could just shampoo your hair with your usual shampoo, um, anything that works for you. And then you do a nice little moisturizing deep conditioner. So I'm going to show you mine that I do at home. So in my conditioner, I use Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. Um, you don't have to use Hellman's brand, but this just happens to be the brand I use. Any mayonnaise will do, but make sure it's like full fat mayonnaise, nothing low fat or anything, because you want the full active of everything for your hair. So mayonnaise is made from like eggs. It has olive oil. So eggs give like a really good protein treatment for your hair. It's like a really natural source to do like a nice protein treatment to strengthen your hair. And also uh, the olive oil that it has adds moisture to the hair. So that's why I'm using this one and it's pretty inexpensive. So I usually, I have a lot of hair. So I tend to use like maybe two tablespoons of mayonnaise and I'm using this little conditioning thing that I bought at the dollar store. But you could use any bowl that you have at home that you could use to mix the conditioner. It doesn't even matter. All right. So I put like two tablespoons in. I may put a little more because I have a lot of hair. So three tablespoons and whatever is left on this spoon. There you go. Okay, and then I'll just put the rest in my hair. All right, so I add more extra virgin olive oil to it because I want it to be extra moisturizing. So, okay, go. so do you just pre-pour? Pour as much as you think you need, but you don't need to put like a whole lot. Maybe like another, probably like a teaspoon, but I'm just pouring. Cause you don't want to make the mixture too runny cause you don't want it running out of your scalp and messing up the place. So try to not put too much liquid. Um, this is peppermint essential oil. Cause peppermint is antifungal and it helps to stimulate blood flow to the roots of your hair and that helps to stimulate hair growth. So maybe put like 10 drops. And this I'm using just castor oil. I bought this when I was in Jamaica, but you can use any castor oil brand because before I bought this one in Jamaica, I used to use the regular one on the in the pharmacy, the Sun Island brand, and that was pretty good too. But I just happened to like this one because it's homemade. And you know, I wanted to support local businesses. So, there you go. And this is what it looks like. And I just use my finger and just mix it up because I don't want to put like my actual spoon inside there that I used earlier. So you just twirl it, twirl it, twirl it with your finger. And then just mix everything together. And this is what it looks like. See, it's not too runny. It's like a nice little yogurt consistency. Make sure it's not runny because you don't want it running out of your hair and falling all over the place. And that's it. That's the mixture for my homemade moisturizing deep conditioner. All right, so now that I've made the mixture, I'm gonna start applying it to my hair. So I'm gonna section my hair into like four sections. And maybe I'll just work with um, 
you don't have to part it like a real part just use your fingers and separate it in like four or maybe you know what i'll probably just do this and then the back all right so we could do four sections And then you just literally start by like using your fingers and you just apply it. Make sure you get the ends because that's the driest part of the hair. So you really want to make sure everything is like applied on the end. Like that. And when you're doing it, try not to pull the hair too much. If there's like a knot, just gently separate it. Don't yank anything and don't pull at anything because you don't want to cause more damage. So just take your time and apply it. gonna pretty much do the same make sure you get it on the ends the oldest part of the hair and the driest and it's the part that really needs all the moisture I've applied the mixture. And then along my hairline tends to be the thinnest part of my hair. So because of that, I'm gonna apply some more of the castor oil along that section on my edges. Because I'm trying to Get them thicker because but that's always been my problem area so I'll just put some castor oil extra and kind of massage it a little you know I 
that my hair is all greased up. You can, you know, do a little scalp massage. It feels so good. <laughs> After I've applied my conditioner mixture, I'm gonna cover my hair with a plastic cap. It kind of generates heat, makes my it generates heat, so it opens up the follicles of the hair, and then it kind of makes the conditioner penetrate the strands of the hair. So it makes it so much more effective. Because it kind of forces the moisture and the protein into the hair strands, the heat. So if you have, I got these caps from the dollar store. So you could use any conditioning cap, any plastic cap you have at home. They have some really nice ones too I saw in the dollar store that's kind of made from foil that's made for conditioning so you could use any of those any plastic cap any if a plastic bag you could use it as well so it kind of forces heat into the strands of the hair opens up the pores so the moisture and the conditioner can penetrate and be more effective and another reason why i love using the mayonnaise it's like a two-in-one conditioner it does both protein and moisture and it's a light protein so it's not like a severe protein treatment it's like very light so if your hair doesn't like the harsh protein treatment this one may be good for it because it's not too much it's not too excessive because mind you it wasn't meant <laughs> it wasn't created for your hair it was created to be eaten so it's like a mild protein treatment and also provides moisture whenever i use it i'm, I'm gonna show you my hair after i rinse it out it's so nice and bouncy so now that i've had the cap on i have a hooded dryer that i'm gonna use to you know get the heat going if you don't have a hooded dryer what you could do put the cap on and then leave it on you could go about your business in your house for probably like an hour or so go about your regular daily activity let it sweat then you rinse it out but since if you have a hooded dryer go by all means use it sometimes i've seen them selling the nice bonnet dryer so you just put it on over it get a little heat going you don't sit under it i usually sit under there for like 10 to 15 minutes and then i come out it's just to get the heat going to open up the pores so now that i finished with the the heating of the conditioner i stayed like 10 minutes under the hooded dryer so now i'm gonna wash the conditioning mixture from my hair when you're rinsing it out, rinse it with warm water. Don't use piping hot water because you don't want to strip your hair of all the moisture that you've already applied. So use warm water um, and then make sure you rinse out the mixture thoroughly because you don't want to end up with scalp buildup and that's going to affect hair growth. Your scalp just needs to be clean and well aerated to increase hair growth. Make sure you rinse out the conditioner properly. After you've rinsed it out, then you could make a tiny shot of cool water and you know just rinse the hair with a little bit of cool water to kind of close the follicles you know to kind of lock in all the moisture that you've already put in there from the heating process and the conditioning process so i've rinsed out the conditioner and i'm just trying to detangle my hair Whenever I'm detangling, I try to use like a huge, like a shampoo comb like this. Cause when you, your hair is wet, it's in like the most fragile form. So you don't want to use a fine tooth comb to create more snags and breakage on the hair. So try to use a comb with like wider, thicker, you know, things to prevent that. And then detangle from the ends upward. Right. 
so there we have it my hair is actually cut in layers but i'm trying to get rid of the layers because if you're trying to get your hair longer layers are not your friend i feel like the layers cause more split ends and more breakage so i'm trying to grow them out <laughs> but i don't know we'll see so next i'm gonna go in with the blow dry process <laughs> 